It's almost time, folks. The Raiden Shogun's rerun banner is almost upon us, which means that many players are preparing to either dump all their Primo gems or saving through for the next big banner. It's likely there's a ton of players who will be saving through Raiden's banner for one reason or another, and however players choose to spend their Primo gems is completely up to them. But I did want to make this video, though, just to discuss Raiden's overall value, since a lot of the players who are choosing to skip her may be under the wrong impressions about the character. At the risk of sounding like a walking advertisement for Raiden, I've been using Raiden in my teams for almost every 36 star Abyss Clear since her release, and let me tell you, the Raiden Shogun is game-changing. She's made all of the Inazuma Abyss cycles incredibly easy to deal with for my main account, as well as many other players with completely free-to-play accounts. Now why is that? Because though Raiden may not be the most flexible unit, where she is good, she absolutely excels. My name is Braxophone, and today we're going to be talking about why you should pull for the Raiden Shogun if you don't currently have her on your roster. Typically speaking, the Archon characters in Genshin Impact are strong. At least to most people's understanding, they have to be. What sort of god in a game isn't powerful? Well, Raiden is no exception. Something that has made Zhongli and Venti shine is that their elements are relatively neutral and can actually benefit reaction teams. On top of that, both of them are extremely easy to play and make playing Genshin Impact very easy. And in terms of making the game feel easy to play, Raiden Shogun actually fits that description pretty well. Because she's a very forgiving character if you're not playing her optimally. And in general, she's also just fun to use. But unlike the Animo and Geo Archon, Raiden's element is Electro, which can actually mess with reaction-based teams fairly easily. And for that reason, a lot of players wrote her off, especially in the beginning. People saw Raiden's battery capability and field time requirement, and because she's Electro, she appeared to be pretty bad, when in reality, we just had to wait a little bit longer until we figured out how to optimize her. And we may find that this is similar with Dendro reactions when we get to Sumeru and fully understand how and if Electro does react with Dendro. The truth is, regardless of her not working in Melt teams, Raiden is still a top unit. Her elemental skill makes her a universal battery, even while off the field, and her elemental burst is an electro nuke followed up by a short time of stance change, where Raiden switches to Itachi and takes on a new attack pattern and different multipliers. Her damage output, when combined with reactions and buffs, is incredibly high. Now with that being said, it's worth acknowledging that she does have a few synergy problems, but that isn't uncommon for electro characters in general. Raiden, while using her elemental burst, cannot activate Beto's burst, which makes Raiden less desired for teams that play similar lead to Taser. For some players, that fact is a deal breaker. And it's fine to feel that way about it, but it's also worth acknowledging that Raiden does have fully functional and powerful free-to-play friendly teams that don't include Beto. And not having synergy with Beto does not ruin the character as much as some players may want you to believe. Would it be great if she did work with Beto? Absolutely. She'd be one of the most broken units in the entire game, easily. But just due to the code in the game and how Mihoyo's built it up, unfortunately the interaction just doesn't work, and it has to be that way, otherwise Emblem of Severed Fate wouldn't work with her. It's a bummer for sure, but it doesn't really make her a bad unit. While Raiden doesn't fit in many teams as well as other Archons, she's incredibly strong in the team she does fit into. And as the roster of Genshin Impact characters expands, Raiden will become even more powerful. All of these things alone make her a great unit, and in my opinion, worth pulling for. But that's not exactly the reason I'm making this video. Most people already know she's good. Most people don't need a reminder that she's good. But for players who decided they're going to skip because they think energy problems aren't going to be a thing after Inazuma, here's some food for thought. If you haven't noticed, since Inazuma dropped, almost every single character has had horrible energy generation problems. And I say almost every character, because there are exceptions. Most new characters are generating two particles on skill use, three on a good day, but having an insanely high cost burst. Toma, Sayu, Kokomi, Sara, and Goro are just some examples of this, but there are even more characters with energy issues. Now typically this wouldn't be a problem, right? Just build the character with ER stats or an ER weapon and problem solved. Except that doesn't really work either, because Mihoyo is also introducing new characters with split scalings. Now, if you don't know, split scaling is essentially when a character wants to be built with one stat, but also wants a different stat to make another part of their kit work, and as a result, both usually end up being mediocre. Tolma is a prime example of this, where his burst implies that he should be dealing some pyro damage, but he needs a ton of energy recharge to get his burst up in the first place, and on top of that, he needs HP stats to not make his shields break instantly. Goro is in a similar place, where he can deal decent damage if you sacrifice all of the energy recharge you need for him, but you need that energy recharge 
damage to get his burst up, and if you try to build him for healing with constellations, he also needs defense stats. But honestly, the unsettling part about these energy needs isn't that they exist for some new characters, it's that they look like they're going to be the new norm. We've seen two Liyue characters released since Inazuma started, and both of these characters also suffer from an energy problem. Shunhe needs to be built with attack so she can get the most out of her kit, but she isn't great at energy generation herself. It's almost like she needs a battery, which there isn't really a shortage of for cryo units, but one of the top cryo units, Ayaka, also needs a lot of energy. And if you're funneling particles into Shunhe, that's less for Ayaka as well, just as an example. Yujin, the other new Liyue unit, also has energy issues as well. You can give her Favonius Lance and an energy recharge Sands and she's fully functional, but she's not as strong as she could be if she didn't need as much of an energy funnel to function. Her main stat that you want is defense, which building for energy recharge actually takes away from. With new Liyue units having extra energy issues as well, it seems like the energy issues we're seeing with new characters may still continue with future characters. And it's possible that this could just be because it's during the 2.x patch that features Inazuma, so even the Liyue characters that release will also have energy issues, but that doesn't really make too much sense to me. Because if you're basing a theme in character needs off of a region specifically, why would you make other characters from different regions also have these issues if it wasn't going to be a permanent thing? In Liyue expansions, the gimmick was shields, and in Inazuma, the gimmick is energy. However, the desire for shields in most difficult content hasn't actually disappeared. Players still use shield units all the time, even though we're now in the Inazuma extension of the Genshin Impact story. It's possible that energy problems could be removed in a way once 3.0 hits since there will be a new mechanical focus for players, but considering how Mihoyo chooses to crank up difficulty when making new units less strong in comparison to old ones, it's unlikely that we'll see energy issues disappear entirely. Overall, it really looks like Hoyoverse is pushing for characters to require much more investment to be able to compete with older units who are imbalanced from the start, mostly due to Hoyoverse just not having an established meta at the beginning of the game. Now that's not to say that new units are balanced either, since most of them are underperforming. However, they're not at the point yet where they're completely useless just due to some other characters and tools in the game. Now back to Raiden. Where does she fit into all this? Well, Inazuma is all about energy recharge, and currently Raiden is the best battery in the game. And if you paired Raiden with any of these characters with energy issues, they would be alleviated fairly easily. But unfortunately, that's not how the game works, at least at the highest level. Right now, it's getting harder and harder to deal enough damage to clear Spiral Abyss, while Mihoyo actively reduces the damage that new units are being able to deal. And for that reason, teams have to be built around reaction damage for the most part, which Raiden doesn't always pair the best with. And that's why Raiden isn't incredibly flexible. But in teams where she can be played, such as Raiden National, Eula Raiden, and Mono Electro just as some examples, she truly excels at her job. Energy issues are virtually gone with her in the team, which allows you to maximize your stats in favor of damage. Hollyverse has purposefully put energy issues into the game as a way to encourage not only the use of non-damaging stats, but also to encourage the use of the Raiden Shogun. But even with energy issues, the Raiden Shogun won't always be able to be the solution, especially if Hollyverse continues to make new units deal less damage than old units. We'll still need new characters who can battery specific elements to be developed just to keep up with Mihoyo's throttling of energy recharge. But the way that myself and a lot of other people see it, Raiden is a good temporary solution for a permanent problem. The meta is malleable. We're going to see the creation of new enemies as well as the return of old ones throughout the game's lifespan. And with Raiden already being a good pickup based on her kit alone, it's hard to imagine that she'd ever be a bad character in the future. But considering that we will be going to Sumeru next, it's likely we won't see the Shogun return on a banner for a while. With all the miscellaneous stories taking place, and new areas to explore every patch, it's possible that festival events such as Mondstadt's Windbloom and any sort of Inazuma festival won't be able to take place every single year. Not unless Mihoyo speeds up the rate of patches, which I don't think we should encourage them to do. And based on Hoyoverse's statements about character banners being tied to story relevance, I would say the odds of Shogun coming back soon after this next banner run are slim to none. She will definitely come back, but just probably not for a while. That being said, I'm no fortune teller, and I obviously could be wrong about this. But what I'm not wrong about about is the fact that Raiden is a very solid pickup for any account for current and future content. Would I place her above Kazuha? No. I think that Kazuha is a much more flexible and potentially powerful unit than Raiden. And in the case where there would be a Kazuha rerun close to Raiden's rerun, nobody would fault you for skipping her for that reason. But if you have extra Primo gems to spare, you're a low spender, or you're just not saving for Kazuha, Raiden is going to be one of the next best pickups for you. If you want to know about Raiden constellations, I actually made a video about those a bit back and my general opinion on them from a meta standpoint, if you want to check that out. I hope that you were all able to learn something from this video. I really think that Raiden is an amazing pickup, and dude, she pulls a sword out of her chest. Like, what is not to love about that? It's so freaking cool. Let me know if you're going to be pulling for Raiden this time around, or if you use her and you've had a positive experience. If you're not pulling for Raiden, who are you saving for? Lastly, make sure to follow the Twitch for super giga epic poggers streams. My little brother wrote that out for me, but do it anyways. Twitch.tv slash
slash Braxophone. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.